Miss Malaika is proudly brought to you by Infinix Mobility, Kenya Airways, Dark and Lovely, Maybelline, GTP, Tomwick Hotel, GH1 TV. What a long ride it has been, but finally we are here at City Escape Hotel inside Pram Pram. And this is where the Miss Malaika Ghana 2019 cultural episode will be coming to you from. Now basically our ladies have been taxed to come up with presentations of their various regions. And tomorrow, well we'll get to see all of that. They're here to get ready and prepare for the task. And so tonight we're just going to relax and just, you know, check in and wait for tomorrow. Again, this is Miss Malaika Ghana 2019. You're welcome to the cultural episode. Malaika, 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 Malaika. of the cultural episode task of Miss Malaika Ghana 2019 here at the City Escape Hotel inside Pram Pram. Our delegates have been tasked to come up with three minutes presentations of their various regions. Now over the past few years we've had our delegates do this presentation in front of community heads, queen mothers and more. But this time around we're turning the story around for the delegates. We're trying to find out how well they can tell stories in the midst of school children. And so later this afternoon, they'll be joined by a number of these school children so they can connect with them. How well will they do this? Well, they're getting ready at the moment, preparing and rehearsing. And so when the sun comes down, it'll be time for the cultural episode task. You're welcome to Miss Malaika Ghana 2019. It's a cultural episode today and usually we are asked to do the presentation in front of older people but today we've been tasked to do it in front of younger ones so I'm actually hoping that they're able to follow and enjoy what we have for them. We are at rehearsals right now and so far so good. I'm very sure you're going to enjoy my performance so stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. The drummers are disappointing me. I want them to play it slow, but they are playing it so fast. I pray they don't disappoint me. The mighty Yasantua. Hope you are ready for me. Some people believe this generation is self-obsessed because of our love for selfies and how we take pictures of everything. But we know better. We know that a selfie is how you capture and celebrate your journey. If you come across something exciting, take a second to capture it. Record it. Show the world. And you never know. It might just be the beginning of something great. That's why we have made the Infinix S4. Infinix S4 with a 32 megapixel AI selfie camera. Empower the Infinity U. Africa, it's amazing and it's ours. So why not get out there and explore it with Kenya Airways? We crisscross this incredible continent over 500 times a week, offering unrivaled connections to over 40 destinations via our world-class hub in Nairobi. There's so much more to see. Discover Africa with Kenya Airways, the pride of Africa. My 
What do you look out for when checking into a hotel? Cleanliness, amenities, food, safety, and more. Tomrick Hotel has it all covered. From our luxurious rooms to our fine dining restaurants, swimming pool, fitness center, business center, conference, and more. At Tomrick Hotel, we understand hospitality and we go the whole nine yards. Call reservations today on 0302-510-307-0302-510-382 or info at tomerichotel.com. Locate us at Shiashi Lagos Avenue in East Legon. Call us today. We welcome you to an amazing experience. Tomerich Hotel, hospitality redefined. Special thanks to Nasco from Electroland, Holy Trinity Spa and Farms, Belacqua, Jumia Food and Jumia Travel, Perga Transport, Afrisoko Online, Copan Hospitality, Omani Beauty, City Escape Hotels, delicious meals served to our delegates by Urban Taste, Eddie's Pizza, Cockpit Bar and Lounge, Starter Pack, Sam's Bite, Carbo Corso, Piano Bar, Fruit Kinky. Much Bilemiye Cultural Troop here in Prom Prom. And yes, it's that time of the day where our beautiful delegates will be telling us stories about their various regions right here in Ghana. You all know how beautiful and rich our culture is. And over the years, we've had delegates present their cultural groups, of course, in front of queen mothers and kings and chiefs and also members of various communities. Today, however, the story is a little different. If you look around, you see some beautiful students from various schools here in Pram Pram. And they all belong to a club called Pram Pram Reads. Hmm. So that should tell you that they are very enlightened. They've read a lot of books and they are here to add on to their knowledge. Ketsi, our beautiful delegates. So today is storytelling time and we're going to make it as fun and as light, but also make sure that we give you all the information you need about the various regions that we have in Ghana. And so again, you're welcome to Miss Malaika Ghana. Children, are you ready? Yes. Once upon a time. Time, time. Once upon a time. Time. There lived 14 beautiful delegates of Miss Malaika Ghana and they were all representing various regions in the country. What they did was to tell us why their region is one of the most popular in the country. And are you ready for that? Yes. All right, if you're ready, Hamdia is representing the Upper East region and she'll be our first contestant for the cultural episode. A round of applause. <laughs> Young ones, are you ready to listen to my story? Yes! My name is Hamdi Ahmed. Where I come from is home to the savannah woodlands, characterized by short, resistant baobab trees and grass, naturally reserved and hospitable people, known as the Mole Dagbani ethnic. The languages largely spoken in this region are Fra Fra, Kasem, and Nandem. I am proudly from the Upper East region of Ghana, with Bogatanga as its capital. I am, however, a victim of the urban culture of speaking only in the Queen's language with children. And I would like to use this platform to encourage our parents to speak to their children in our local dialect so as to preserve our culture. We come from a country which is ethnically diverse, but still have similar surface connections. And the only way we can preserve our differences is through our languages, our clothing, and our ancestry. I have absolutely enjoyed my trip so far, and my first stop was at the Paga Crocodile Pond, located at the Ghana Burkina Faso border. The sacred pond is a sanctuary for crocodiles. The Kasena people believe that each citizen's soul has a corresponding crocodile. And this is believed because the death of each citizen 
corresponds with the death of the crocodiles. I have also been to Nagbe Bay Shrine located in Pusiga. It is a place for spiritual connection existing since the 14th century. Nagbewa, who is Nagbewa? He was believed to have never died. He vanished at a spot in the shrine. However, for the purpose of this eye-opening experience, I have learned to say a few things. For how are you? We say, awo la fila. Repeat after me, children. Awo la fila. And to say welcome, we say, kanyas nyasi. And to thank you all for joining me here, I would say, we are the Barker. All right, so the journey continues. From the Upper East region, we're going to the Central region. Are you ready? Yes. All right, so she represents a warrior from the Central region. Put your hands together for Finba. Good evening, everyone. How are we doing, children? Good. Today, I'm going to tell you a short story about a group of warriors in my hometown, which is Cape Coast. Once upon a time, in the great land of Cape Coast, which is also called Ogwa, there lived a group of warriors called the Asafo Company. They were formed by the people to protect them from kidnapping and from violence during the time of slave trade. So the people formed the word Asafo from two words. Sa, which means war, and fo, which means people. So when you put them together, you get a Safo, war people or warriors. Seven different Asafo companies were formed in the land of Ogwa. Bentu, Bentu. Anafo, Intin, Inkum, Brofumba, Akrampa, and Amafo. And all these Asafu companies were headed by a general captain called the Tufuhin. Each of them had their uniquely made flags, like the one you see me holding here today. Asafu company number three, Intin. Each of them also had their superior captain called the Supi. And whenever it was time for a well-known festival, the Fetsu Afashe, these warriors featured largely exhibiting their energetic and captivating war dance. Today, that war dance is now used as a welcoming dance to usher important people into the community. My name is Efwa Finba, but today, call me Ejedu, the Asafu warrior. Ejedwe, Omasuni Bejedwe. Ejedwe, Omasuni Bejedwe. Ejedwe, Edwe. Ejedwe, Omasu Edwe. Ikroyo, Aye. Kuma obu man kuma obu man kume obu man kumo obu man kumo da pejane obu man kumo da pejane osne osne chinya bwa. Good evening, everyone. My name is Baba, a proud fancy from Yamransa in the Central Region. But today, you can call me Osun, which is one of the great warriors the Fantis had. I'm here to give you a very short story of how we the Fantis came into existence. So many years ago, after the slave trade, the Fantis decided to form a group on their own. So they separated themselves from the Asantis in what is currently known as Techiman today in the Bronx Ahafu region. But to form a group on their own, they needed some people to guide them. They couldn't have journeyed alone. So I, Osno, the warrior, I decided to lead my people. But I wasn't alone. I had two other great warriors to help me lead my people and they were Obruman Kuma and Odapejan. Obruman Kuma represented the will, and Odapejan represented the ego. 
And as my name suggests, Osun, I represented the elephant. But along the journey, something very unfortunate happened. Obuman Kuma and Odapijan, they died. So everything was up to me, Osun, to lead my people. So I led them to a land which is now known as Mankesim, also in the central region. So when we got there, the fancy chief fetish priest planted a spear in the ground. So that spot became a place of meeting for the priest and the elders any time there were meetings concerning the fancy people and the kingdom. Do you know one interesting thing? Till now, nobody has been able to remove that spear. And nobody can remove it. Can you remove it? Do you think you are strong enough? No mortal hand can remove it. Not even Ghana's strongest. So that is how we, the fancies, came into existence. And then we grew from time to time, from generation to generation. But let us note, when the fancy people separated themselves, almost half of them left. So they call them a fan atso, meaning the half that left. So as time went on, people started calling it fancies. So that is how we came into existence. I hope you have enjoyed my story. Thank you, Medawanase. Hello, everyone. I hope you are good. Who's ready for a story? Are you sure? Okay. I am Obape Amamponsa, the one and only granddaughter of Nana Bwamponso, the continent of Sunyane. How many of you even know there were elephants in Sunyane? I doubt any of you do. And that reminds me of a strong and very brave hunter called Nana Bwahen Koko. Nana Bwahen Koko came from Amakum in the Ashanti region. One day, he decided to take a trip. He discovered a piece of land which was filled with so many elephants, huge and big elephants. Although he was brave and strong, he couldn't butcher them alone. So Nana Bwahin decided to invite people from the neighboring villages to come help him butcher these elephants. And he always did it by this river called Sunyaimu. These people also wondered, we can't be going and coming all the time. We can't be doing that. So let's just settle here so we can help Nana Bwahin Koko anytime he slaughters or kills an elephant, right? So, anytime those people were asked, Mo Kohi in Akan, which means, where are you going? They responded with, Meko Asunu Jaye. In my language, which is Akan, Asunu means elephant, and Jaye means butchering. So when you put it together, what do you get? Asunu Jaye, which means butchering elephant. So as time went on, Asunujaye changed from Asunujaye to Sunujaye. And Sunujaye also changed to Sunyane. And because of this great and brave hunter, anytime a royal is invited to a festival in any region at all, we chant, Boahe Kokoe! Boahe Kokoe! Bakunwe ya! Bakunwe ya! Bakunwe ya o! To announce their presence in the midst of the people. So what I'm leaving with you all is the right pronunciation of Sunyane isn't Sunyane, but Sunyane Medamwase. <laughs> Hello, young ones. How are you all? We are fine. Let me ask you a question. Who here has been to a market place before? What did you go and buy, my dear? I went and buy soya beans. Soya beans. My dear, how about you? I went with my mother to go and buy fish. Fish. Well, it reminded me of my grandmother who used to sell fish at Takrade Market Circle. My name is Kimberly from Western Region of Ghana, Takrade to be precise. And I'm here to tell you about a very popular market in Takrade. Takrade Market Circle is the economic and commercial hub of Ghana's Western Region. The market got in name due to the last circle which it was formed and the stores of the market were built to form that ship. The market was built and planned by city engineers to cater for all the needs of migrants who came to my region to work at Takrade Harbour. And also, the market is sited at a place which makes it easily accessible by everyone in the Western Region. All roads, major, major roads, leads to Market Circle, like the John Mensah Road, the Liberation Road, 
and others. And all kinds of economic activities go in and around the circle. My children, let me tell you something. Refrain from window shopping when you go to Takrade Market Circle. And never take pictures of stuff without asking the owners for permission. Do you know why? Because they might end up beating you. Yes, so you have to ask for permission first. And note that Market Circle is a very busy place. In the same corner, Kotaza, in the shuttle or being home, fin chum, chin chum, you would have to wear something comfortable to enable you to move freely around the circle. I want to ask you who would want to visit Akwade Market Circle with me? Oh, yes, don't worry. I'll take each and every one of you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And that was Kimberly telling us about the market circle at the Western region. And of course, at this point, we've seen our delegates represent four regions. We still have a lot more to go. And I hope that you've enjoyed yourself so far. Are you looking forward to more? Yes? yes. Okay. We have so much more coming your way. This is Miss Malaka Ghana 2019, the cultural episode. Keep watching. Some people believe this generation is self-obsessed because of our love for selfies and how we take pictures of everything. But we know better. We know that a selfie is how you capture and celebrate your journey. If you come across something exciting, take a second to capture it. Record it. Show the world. And you never know. It might just be the beginning of something great. That's why we have made the Infinix S4. Infinix S4 with a 32 megapixel AI selfie camera. Empower the Infinity U. Africa, it's amazing and it's ours. So why not get out there and explore it with Kenya Airways? We crisscross this incredible continent over 500 times a week, offering unrivaled connections to over 40 destinations via our world-class hub in Nairobi. There's so much more to see. Discover Africa with Kenya Airways, the pride of Africa. What do you look out for when checking into a hotel? Cleanliness, amenities, food, safety, and more. Tomrick Hotel has it all covered. From our luxurious rooms to our fine dining restaurants, swimming pool, fitness center, business center, conference, and more. At Tomrick Hotel, we understand hospitality, and we go the whole nine yards. Call reservations today on 0302-510-307-03. 302-510-382 or info at tomerichotel.com. Locate us at Shiashi Lagos Avenue in East Legon. Call us today. We welcome you to an amazing experience. Tomerich Hotel. Hospitality redefined. Thanks to our trending team, Ronnie is everywhere. Amayal Debra, Ikonkonsa.com, GH Kweku, Feinberg, Ghana Web, Calls Ghana, Amazing Memorable Photography by Chocolate Shut It, Lovely Accessories by YS Dazzle, Catwalk and Choreography by Exotic Modeling Agency. Our props, Curtsy Prop Haven Inside the Trade Fair, Grooming by Image Bureau. Welcome back to Miss Malaka Ghana 2019. It's the cultural episode, and as expected, our delegates are taking us on a journey across the country, telling us about the food, the dance, and the total lifestyle of various people across the country. Well, we've seen representations from the Western region to the OT region and many more. And in fact, speaking of OT region, guess what? We have Sophie, who's ready to tell us more about this newly created region, which was carved from Northern Volta. Are you ready? A round of applause. Here we go, Sophie. Hello, children. Today, I'm here to tell you a very interesting story. My name is Ifwa Esiedua Echampun. But would you believe it if I tell you I'm from the Volta region? Well, it's no longer the Volta region because it has been separated into Volta and OT. So it's now part of OT, but it used to be part of the Volta region. Have you even heard of the term Choboy? You have. I'm sure you don't know where it's from. 
But by the time I'm done with my story, you know all about it. Very long ago, before your grandmother was born, before your grandmother's grandmother was born, even before my grandmother's great-grandmother was born, there was a war in this country. And because of the war, a lot of people were afraid. They had to move to places that were safe. Amongst these people were the Ashantis and the Akiapims. So they moved to different places to settle. And some of them happened to settle in my village, which is called Apisokubi. That is why, even though we were in the Volta region, we speak Akan and have Akan traditions. When we moved there, it was not everyone who was at peace. Legend even has it that there were two fishermen, one Akan and one Ewe, who, despite being neighbors, never said a word to each other. The Ewe man had a son, and so did the Akan man. And these two boys went to school every day together on a canoe because they had to cross a stream before they got to their school. However, one day, when they were coming back from school, you would not imagine what happened. Out of nowhere, a very strong wind just blew the canoe, and the two boys fell into the water. How sad. They started calling out for help. The Ewe boy shouted, Cho! Cho! And the Akan boy also shouted, Bue! Bue! So the onlookers made a joke out of it and put the two words together, saying, Cho Bue! And they had to rescue the boys from the water. So they had to work together. And they started to chant, Cho Bue! Yeah. Cho Bue! Yes, so as they chanted, they were able to take the two boys out of the water and they went home safe and sound. Because both families worked together, now they became friends. And the people all worked together to make this happen. Now when you hear the term choboy, people use it to signify times when you have to come together to achieve the same purpose. That takes me to the moral of my story. The moral is that we must learn to work together at peace with everybody despite your ethnic differences, because together we can achieve more. Thank you. Thank you, and that was a beautiful story. Now we're moving to the Ashanti region, and Portia is ready to tell us her story. With a round of applause, let's welcome her. Anansi Sensu So. Anansi Sensu So. There lived a small group of people in a village. They were very happy. And then one day, strange people came and attacked them. They demanded their treasure. And in the olden days, when we say treasure, we mean the gold, the curry, the money. The people in the village were very scared. Even the women were hiding. Men were even hiding from their fellow men. Some of the men went to hide behind a house. In that house, there was a woman. She was very brave. She was very, very brave. She didn't understand why men were hiding from their fellow men. She was very angry. She wore her war gown, as you can see. And then she took her gun. And then she went in search of the men in her village. Let me show you what she did. Where are the men? Where are the men? Where are they? Oh, now I see that some of you fear to go forward and fight these men. Come to think of them demanding the golden stool, and you men who call yourself very brave can't face them. If you men can't face them, then I will face them. I believe you know who I'm talking about. Who can tell me? Yes? Yasantua. Ah! Clap for yourself. So Yasantua led the war. Let me show you what happened during the war. finally defeated them because Yasantua was very brave. So, my children, I want you to be brave 
and very determined to achieve your goals. Because in anything you do, you will definitely succeed. Like your great great Ya Asansua. Thank you. <laughs> Interestingly, just after Portia wrapped up, I heard one child say, wow, you've learned about Yasantua. Yes. What did you learn? Okay. I learned that she was a great woman. She was a great woman. And Portia gave us an advice. He taught us that we should be brave. Yes, she said we should all be brave. So I hope that from today onwards, you will all be brave. Yes. A round of applause again for Portia. Such an energetic storytelling from Portia. Now we're moving back to the central region and Phyllis also has something to show us. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's welcome Phyllis. Hello, how are you all doing? I hope you are doing fine and excited about what I have for you tonight. So I'm not here to bore you with long historic events. I'm here for us to have fun. So. My region has got lots of recreation, such as Antwe Tree, Ampe, Mpempena, Shushumbe Udofu, and many others. But what I want us to learn and play today is the Antwe Tree. The original name of this game is Anshewe Tree, which means don't look back, but we popularly call it Antwe Tree. This game can be played by both boys and girls, and it can be played either in the morning afternoon or evening. Players of this game squat in a very big circle with the leader running around the circle with a piece of rag. That's what I'm holding while singing the song for the others to respond. The one holding the rag leaves it gently and quietly at the back of one member on the circle. If that person finds it, he picks it up and follows the leader until the leader resumes the spot of the member on the circle. If that member is able to catch up with the leader, he beats him with a rag, and the then leader still becomes the leader. Suppose that the member who has the rag behind doesn't find the rag behind him, and the leader goes round the circle and comes to meet that member still on the circle. The leader uses the rag to hit that member. Although this game prevents us to look back, our instincts must be strong enough to tell us that the rag is behind us, even without a peep. In as much as we want to have fun tonight, we also have to know that this game is a form of exercise. It's one that brings unity and togetherness, and also it makes one attentive and very alert. So before I leave, I want us to demonstrate this game. So let's go. Antwe tre, Antwe tre, Antwe tre, Antwe tre. Obi bo, Obi bo, Obi wo, Obi babe wo, Obi babe wo. So the game we just demonstrated is the Antwe tree. So whenever you find yourself in my region and you meet children play this game, you can even join in the fun. My name is Phyllis Vesta Boysen, but for today, you can call me Ewusiwa, and I come from the central region, Midahon Ase. Good morning, everyone. Oh, I said good morning. Oh, Dejo, don't mind me. Today, I am here to tell you a story. How many of you have been to the Central Region? Oh, none of you? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, I'm going to tell you how the name Cape Coast and one other town came to be. Did you didn't know that Cape Coast was also known as Cabo Corso? You didn't know? Yes. It was called Cabo Corso by the Portuguese, which means short cape. But we, the fancies, call it Ogua. And legends have it that in the olden days, there used to be this old man called Ejo Ogwa. They used to live in Efutu. And one day, he decided to go for a long walk. On his way, he discovered this land by the sea. So he rushed back and told his people. And guess what? He decided to go and live there. Now, let me take you back to the Europeans. When the Europeans came here, you know that's where a lot of people used to go and buy things because the white people have come, they've brought a lot of things. So, in fancy, we call markets Gua. So another school of thought said because of that, that's how the name Ogwa also came about. So you get it. Yes. 
Now, when the Europeans came, how many of you enjoy crabs? You like crabs? You also like it? Good. They were so scared to catch these crabs, but they loved eating them. So they would always send the locals to go and catch the crabs for them. In fancy, when you ask someone to buy something for you, it's called koto. So they decided to call the animal koto, koto, koto. You know it's called koto? Yes. yes. Now, where they used to catch these crabs, these crabs, the, the stream is called raba in fancy. So they call the area koto raba, which is modern day koto kraba. There are a lot of towns with a lot of history. So I will take you to each and every town. Remind me, oh, if I forget, you know I'm old. I will take you to each and every single town and tell you the history behind every name so that you know that Cape Coast, we are rich in history. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Aquele suma ye 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 Aquele suma ye 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 Mingane Good evening my name is Alma you can call me Aquele for today Did you all tell your parents you are coming to listen to me Yes Are you sure Yes Okay what I'm about to tell you is very, very important. I would want you all to pay rapt attention because after this, I would ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. I'm about to tell you about one of the rituals from the greater Accra region, known as Akwele Soma or Ye Ye Ye. There lived a very wealthy woman called Kai. She had everything, I mean everything, but a child. She was always praying to God to grant her that wish. So after some time, the gods listened to her and granted her her wish. And you know, in the Ghan community, children are seen as blessings from God. And when that blessing is doubled in the form of twins, then ah, there's a ritual performed. So Kai and her family did just that. On that day, Kai bathed her children beautifully, prepared delicious meals for them and pampered them. I'm sure most of you would like to be pampered, right? Yes. Okay. So, after that, the remains from the spiritual bath is thrown away. Throwing this away signifies the throwing away of all evil deeds and uncleanliness from their family. And the things you, you use to bath for the children are ingredients that they are used to cleanse the children from every spirit, evil spirit, following them. Kai did exactly that, so that no evil spirit will look at her children. So, this is how come the gods do this ritual for twins born in their family. This rite is performed by the people of my region, that is the greater Accra region. Can any of you tell me what you've heard so far? Okay. When twins are born, there are spiritual rituals that are done. Good. Clap for yourself. Oh, let me give you something. That's what today. I really came. You're welcome. I'll see you all some other time, okay, for more interesting stories. Thank you so much, Alma, and we're sharing that toffee, okay? We still have four more regions to visit. Well, the Greater Accra region, the Central region, Ahafu region, and also the Upper East region. But we want you to continue watching. It's Miss Malaka Ghana 2019. We'll be right back. Infinix S4. family is 
We're all the same, yet different in our tastes. That is why we have a drink for everyone. Whether it's for the easy go lucky ones or for the not so easy ones. The urban swags or for the deep rooted. For the ones who shine during the day or for the ones who sparkle at night. For the bubbly ones or for the one who is cool as ice cold water. For the ones who love to flex or for the active ones. For the young ones or for the young at heart. Whatever be the difference, we are Ghanaians and we are one big fun loving family. Fun beverages for Ghana by Ghana. Beverages from Bell family. Proudly Ghanaian. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Delegate stylish designs and clothing by African by Nana, Sherry Brown Couture, Nipo Skin, Sante Trends, Adwoa Yeboa Clothing, Lamle Couture, Kweku Ejeni Boating, September by Awulana, Anis Bespoke, Akuchi, Atruba Couture, Bull and Wood Merchandise, Everything Girly Boutique, Number One Fan Clothing. Welcome back to Miss Malaka Ghana 2019. It's storytelling time. And today we have students from Presby Basic School and also St. Joseph Anglican School all here in Pram Pram. And they are part of the Pram Pram Reads Book Club. And so today they are our judges and also our audience. Their teachers are here with them and they're enjoying some good storytelling time from our 14 delegates. It's a cultural episode and we visited a number of regions. Four more regions to go before we eventually find out who told the most believable story and sold her region the best way possible. Coming up next, we have Kukwa, and she is a warrior from the central region. All the way from the Fanti lands, I bring to you the Asafo dance. The word Asafo derived from Sa, which means war, and Fo, which means people. Hence, warrior. Do you know there was a war between the Ashantis and the Fantis? Yes, they fought nine times. How many times did I say they fought? Nine times. The reason was because the Ashantis wanted to take control over Ghana, but the Fantis said, no, no, they won't surrender. Can you imagine? Only 30 Asafu warriors from the Fantis side fought against over thousands of Ashanti members and defeated them. Isn't that strange? The Francis dug a big hole. What did they do? And the Ashantis kept falling into the hole. That led to their death and defeat. You now know how they defeated them. The dead bodies in the hole grew into plantain trees. Isn't that strange too? And the dead bodies that grew into plantain trees, which haven't borne a single fruit till date, is a chromantin as I'm talking to you right now. I'll take you there. You'll see it for yourselves. So after the war, the Asafu Company was divided into seven groups, which I, Kukwa, happens to be one of the warriors of the Anafu Asafu Number no. 2 Company. This war led to Ashanti saying, Seukum apema, apembeba. And we, the Fantis, recounted this saying with Ogwa Akoto. So here comes the Asafu victory dance. Okay, that was also another interesting one from Kukwa from the central region. And now we're moving back to the upper east region. Mbord has a story for us. A round of applause for her. Yeah, Zam Zam, I bring you greetings from the upper east region. Today, I'm dressed like a warrior because I'm going to tell you a story about a great man called Nagbiwa. 
Nagbewa migrated into the Upper East region in Pusiga. He had nine children with different women. His eldest son was Zirili, and his youngest favorite son was Kufugo. One day, when Nagbewa was getting old, he became blind. He called Kufugo's mother and said, I want to make Kufugo my favorite son king when I die. But there was a problem. Kufugo's mother had gone to the market, and Zirili's mother pretended to be Kufugo's mother and went and listened to the king. She became very jealous when she heard the king's plan of making Kufugu the king instead of her son, Zirili. So, she told Zirili her son. Zirili became very angry. He said, how can you make my junior brother king when I am the senior? I must kill Kufugu. Zirili thought of a plan. He dug a very big hole in front of the house. He filled it up with grasses. Then he told his wives, boil some hot water right now and go and call Kufugu to my house now. Hmm. When Zirili was there, Kufugu started coming. He walked to the hole, pretending to have a conversation with Kufugu. He opened his arms so that Kufugu would come and hug him where the hole was. Kufugu did not know and walked up. And what happened? He fell into the hole. Then Zirili told his wives, pour the hot water on him. Hmm. The hot water was so hot, Kufugu shouted for help. Nobody could hear him, so he died. Hmm. When the elders heard the news, they did not know how to tell Nagbe what that his favorite son had died. Hmm. So they gathered children like you to play a flute. Do you know what they were saying? Zirili, Kufugu. In Kusasi, it means Zirili has killed Kufugu. When Nagbewa heard the nouns from his background, he said, what is going on here? Call my elders for me. When the elders came, they said, Chief, your favorite son has been killed by Zirili. Nagbewa got up with anger. He said, what? Do you know what happened? He turned into an animal and vanished. Some people say that the ground opened and swallowed him. And up to today, nobody has seen Nagbewa again. Today, when Nagbewa was seated, he was sitting in one of these tents. It was buried and used as his grave. Today, it is called the Nagbewa Shrine. People come from far and near to go and sacrifice for help. You know, even though Nagbewa left in anger and nobody can find him, he still had a good spirit. Because when you go to the Nagbewa Shrine, you can ask for anything, any help, and he will give you. So no matter what people do to you, no matter the bad things they do to you, make sure you repay them with good. Do you know what happened to Zirili after that? Zirili became king, but a few years later he died because Nagwewa cursed him before. I brought some pictures to show you the Nagwewa shrine, and some people visiting the Nagwewa shrine. Open it and share it to your friends. Thank you. So you see the picture? This is the Nagbewa shrine. And these are people walking to the shrine to go and make sacrifices. So you see, Nagbewa today is the father of many, many villagers. I would leave now, but I will show you the reason why I am dressed like this. What a story that was. I've never heard it. Is this the first time you're hearing this story? Yes. It is? Yes. Did you love it? Yes. All right. And so that was from the Upper East region. And now I know why we have the Nagbewa Shrine. And I guess you've also found out for yourself. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. And so coming up next, we have from the Greater Accra region, another performance. Good evening, children. My name is Juliet Williams Romeo, but my local name is Manti. Do you know that apart from the Homowa festival, the people of Tema have a special festival they also celebrate, which is the Pelejo dance. And I'm going to tell you about the story of this festival. A very long time ago, there lived two men in the town. One was brave and one was wicked. This brave man was called Ashite Lomo. 
Everyone in the town liked him, but the wicked one, because he was so wicked to the people, they never liked him. So one day, Ashitolomo decided to follow this wicked man into the forest. And they fought, they really fought, and he was able to kill this wicked man. After that, Ashitolomo took off the wicked man's clothes and used it as a flag and ran into the town. When the people saw it, they were very happy because the wicked man in the town has been killed. Wouldn't you be happy? So they followed him into the town. They were singing and dancing. They were very happy. So that day was marked as the Pelejo dance. When it gets to the Pelejo festival, everyone, including the queen and the king of Tema, gather at the Pelejo ground to witness the performance of all the groups in the town. I am the leader of the brutal group, and this is the color of our flag, and this is how we dress during the Pelejo festival. So I will demonstrate the dance, and I will sing how the Pelejo dance is done. Hello, beautiful children. My name is Habiba Bent Abdullah, and my local name in Banda is Ajiba. You are staring at your beautiful friend here, right? She is here with me because the festival I'm going to narrate to you is not just celebrated by adult women, but girls like you, you, and even you can celebrate the Kruby Festival. The Kruby Festival is a festival which is celebrated in my hometown, Banda, in the Ahafo region. During that festival, a lot of activities go on, singing, dancing, and merrymaking. During the festival, a huge wooden platform is mounted, which is called Kruby Pata. Yes, I have pictures of that here, and I want you to see it so that you have an idea of what I really want you to know. Pass it around, please. Thank you. So on this platform, the single women and girls of Banda who are participating in the Kruby Festival mount on it, sing, dance, and after the merrymaking, singing and dancing, if you are engaged, you come down by the wooden structure with your fiancé. But if you are single like me, you come down alone. But mind you, pregnant women are not allowed to climb the Kruby Pata because it is believed that if you climb that structure, you can fall. I have some presents for you, all the way from Banda. Thank you. All right. Hey, no, this is for me. Thank you very much. Congratulations, this is for you. You can take your seats and a round of applause for Abiba and for all our delegates. And we mentioned that our students here will serve as our judges for today's episode. Did you enjoy yourselves? Yeah. Then one more time, let's give a round of applause for all our delegates. Incredible performances from all 14 delegates representing various regions in the country. And of course, we enjoyed ourselves. We hope that you learned a thing or two from their presentations as well. Our students here, like I said, are judges. And so they'll deliberate and let us know which of their performances was their favorite. This has been the Miss Malaka Ghana cultural episode. We have more coming your way. And so keep watching.
are done. After the wedding bell sees all newly wedded couples yearn for a memorable honeymoon. Do you want a honeymoon full of fun, relaxation, silliness, sports and wellness, love, or adventure for the ultimate honeymoon destination? Visit the Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm. Soga Copper. One hour drive from Accra, Tema. It's incredible! Bang on target! <laughs> Nasco, bring home happiness. Our ladies glammed up by Black Cherry Beauty Lounge, Adele's Makeover, FABMUA, Bell Flair, Faces by Kess, D Lynn Hair, Mercy Lumo Artistry, Rose International Limited, Cook's Hair, Pretty with Oyinka, Nail Garden. Welcome to NASCO Question of the Week with Red Generous. To participate, visit vote.malaikagh.com, click the question button and answer this question correctly. Question of the Week. Mention five destinations outside Ghana our top finalists have been privileged to travel to over the past few years. Don't forget to visit vote.malaikagh.com to answer the question correctly and you can be the lucky winner for our beautiful NASCO product. See you again next week with more goodies. What a beautiful weekend it has been here at City Escape Hotel at Pram Pram. Many thanks to them. They have been housing us this whole weekend and we absolutely enjoyed ourselves. And also big thank you going out to Pram Pram Reads. They made these students available for us here in Pram Pram so they can witness the cultural episode. Next week is the charity episode and I hope you're looking forward to that as well. But until then, it's time to dance and make merry with our students and with our delegates. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Join us, let's dance. of the kids was really really fun very i know they were actually listening to what i was telling them <laughs> it was very interesting as well very because children get bored easily it's so you, easy. you have to keep them active oh. and yeah so i hope i win this task too hey me too i hope i win <laughs> my name is tara Beidou and i enjoyed all the stories that were told and my favorite contestants were Fimba and Portia. Portia and Alma. My favorite is Fimba. And Bod and Portia.